Hi, and welcome to another Razorback screencast. In the last video, I believe we were looking at the uh, camera positioning, and we set up some keyframes down here that allows us to switch through different perspectives. So that's pretty cool. In this uh, video, I think I'd like to focus on some of the unfinished geometry. Is that something that we've just sort of skipped over in the past? So I'm just going to go back to my editor camera. And we're just going to look at this region here that's sort of um, in need of some help. So what we have is we have a couple of battery units and we have the flywheel housing. So the flywheel housing is probably the easier one to tackle, so I'll do that first. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is this, um, these straight edges. So what we can do is start off by converting this to an editable object. However, we'll see that the rotation segments are a bit low right now, so First thing I'll do is just crank that up. 50 should be good. And then I can just uh, press C and convert it to an editable object. Then I think I just want to select these loops. And then bevel them a little bit. Once I've beveled them, it's sometimes a good idea to convert the n-gons that were created to polygons if you didn't have that option set. And then here on this side, I'd envision sort of a triangular structure arching over it. So if we go to the side view, we could probably do a better job at creating that. Start with a cube and just sort of massage it into shape until I get something that I'm happy with. So I know that I want it to line up with the frame of the bike. Convert it to edit double. And just sort of move this section upwards. Now if I go to the top view, Things are starting to look messy, but I think I see the correct area. So what we want to do is make it not too wide. Uh, we don't have much space there with the blade, so let's keep that in mind. And We'll sort of move this top section inward to make sort of a pyramid shape. And so we have something that sort of looks mildly believable as a support shape. And we can bevel those edges to give it that sort of uh, almost finished look. And because I toggled the N-Gons option, I will select these flat faces, and I believe UZ will get rid of all the edges, and just leave you with N-Gons, and N-Gons are better for beveling than triangulated geometry is. I know the new version of Cinema 4D, version R15, I actually just switched to using R14 for this project, but R15 has a completely overhauled bevel tool, but unfortunately I will not be jumping on the R15 bandwagon right away just because of uh, price issues, I think. So I have this... Uh, support here and I think it's okay um, I'd love if we could do some stuff to it that'll make it seem a little more sci-fi 
So let's add a, uh, a central disk to it, so like a cylinder. Scale it down a bunch and then use the uh, transfer function to transfer it to this object. What that's going to do is put it right at the center and then we can orient it on the X axis. I think it needs maybe 24 segments and then we sort of scale it so it's just sort of a bump down here. We bring that out and just again this is one of those instances where we're sort of making it look like it needs to be there um, you know just sort of creating uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure what what the word I'm looking for is but you know, creating something believable And so I think we can leave that like that, but we should probably bevel it. I mean, nothing really has a straight edge like that. So select that loop, turn subdivision off, do one bevel and then a second. So we get that sort of straight bevel. So that's a little bit more like what I was envisioning, but still not sci-fi enough for me. Uh, I was looking at some of the KIRS systems on some of these cars, the kinetic energy, uh, KERS, K-E-R-S maybe? Maybe that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it might have been KERS for kinetic energy recovery system. But either way, um, there's almost like these sort of pipes and hoses that go to different parts. And I think that would look pretty cool if we did it in this case. So let's create some of that. Start with a linear spline right from the center and then I'm going to bring it out to right about here on the edge and then let's just sort of bring it up to there and let's do another one so We'll create a new spline. We can do that by reselecting the tool. Right from the center, let's go straight up. And then let's go forward like this. So we have these two splines. Uh, we can probably connect them to one and then we get a sweep nerves and let's put a uh, n-sided circle in the sweep nerves scale it down and when we bring it out from the center out to where we're sort of experimenting with these parts Move the axis up. Let's crank the inside up to 10 sides and then scale it down a little bit so we get that kind of look like pipes coming out. And pipes coming out by itself like this is pretty cool but it does need to um, sort of transition over the edge. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's turn off the sweep nerves for now. Go back so we can see the lines. And what we can probably do is go from the side view and use the knife tool, just in regular line mode. And we'll just sort of cut right there. So that means we have one point. Um, but we need that to be two points and I think I'm not certain there's an official way to do that, but I know we can just cut again right through it, and that should give us a second point like that. 
and then we can select these three points and move them down. Once we've done that, we can do the same thing here. So I'm just going to cut right through that spot again. It won't be exact, but it will be close enough. And then we probably want these to route into the machine. So again, we want to just sort of create another point on the same spot. This one is going to be tricky. I think that works. Yep, that works, but I do have the wrong point selected. So you can probably move it away and then move this one to that point and then move it like that. I mean, this will be a lot easier if you turn snapping on, but I think this works. You can always press Alt D to toggle the axis see what you're actually doing and then we can select both of these points and zero them on the X so that they are in the same plane like that and we'll do the same to the other points we're dealing with here so using the live selection tool we can just select those points you can also just scale it down to zero that works as well what we can do is bring this about halfway up and then select these and move them that was weird very very strange let's make sure I did that correctly there we go. The perspective was messing with me. So now that we have that sort of look, we can turn these uh, sweeps back on and probably go into wireframe mode, select all the corners. Once we have those selected, like there's two more over here we can use the chamfer tool to round those corners out so it looks like we're having some issues we may need to adjust a couple of things or do it in separate batches so let's try doing it in separate chunks let's do these first Yeah, it looks like we're just too close. I'm not sure how we can fix this immediately. Maybe reducing the size of the pipe. Yeah, that helps, but we have to reduce it very far. I like the big beefy look of it. I suppose we could just move the uh, move the points around a little bit. Let's try that. Also you can turn on x-ray mode for something like this. Usually helps me. That way we can see the points inside of the object. So if we have the spline like that, moved it away, that doesn't work. That doesn't work either. Not entirely sure how to make this work.
What if we did a very slight chamfer? It still gives us that effect. What if we selected this point down here and moved it like that so it was at an angle? I think this might work. Well, that's a lot better. Cool, so now we can go back to our side view. We can round these two points, but I'm thinking we should probably move it away. So in order to see what kind of points we have here, I'll turn X-ray back on. Have one here, one here. And then we can work on this one. And then take a look at these down here. We're probably going to have the same problem with this one. So I'll just stretch it out. All right, so we can turn off X-ray. And we now have something that looks a little crazy. And I think that's what we're going for because, you know, this, this part of the machine is one of the more sci-fi sort of futuristic parts of it. Um, there's a couple other things we can do here. So we can use the snapping tools, see if we can get those to work. Uh, what we really want is um, two cylinders at the end of those splines. Let's see where we're going with this. So I want to use snapping, uh, 3D snapping. Let's just tear this off. I want to do 3D snapping, um, vertex snap, and axis snap. Let's see if we can get this to work. So we should then be able to move the cylinder to the vertex. Scale it down. See what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty dead on. Let's create an instance of it and move the instance to that vertex. Let's make sure we're snapping on the correct vertex. Vertice. Yep, the one on the end. Here, the one on the end as well. So now that we have this cylinder, we can change its orientation to X. And we can make its radius a lot larger. And turn off snapping. And if we unhide the bike, and turn the sweep back on. You see that we now have this cylinder where we can sort of adjust its position until it looks like something that might facilitate the entry of these pipes into this mechanism. So we just kind of make it the right size. Looks pretty good. Make it have the right number of edges. Twenty sounds good. And then we can convert it to an editable object, start to modify it a little bit. Sort of follow that same style of having the angular bevel the bordering edges and we see here that we're a little low on the resolution for the end side so we can always crank that up to 16 edges if we needed to we can keep an eye on this subdivision here we can also go to the spline and change its adaptive subdivision to something more reasonable like 15 degrees it's another one of my favorite numbers in cinema 4d 
15 degrees for adaptive splines. And so now we have this kind of cool futuristic looking um, side paneling for the flywheel. And it, it kind of makes it look a little more menacing, a little more unpredictable. You're not really sure what that is. But, uh, you know, I believe in the story it was some sort of a kinetic energy recovery system. So the engine would power the flywheel, and at some point the flywheel would power a generator, etc. And these are batteries. They're, they're just cubes. They're just squares, really. But that doesn't mean we can't do fun stuff with them. So if we were to scroll to this object and we look at this battery in this battery module object, we can duplicate the battery cube because it's in a null and then we can move this part up to the top sort of create a cap for it just like that and then I'm thinking maybe we select the edges at the top of the cap and the edges around the sides and then apply that same bevel language we've been using everywhere else with the two bevels and then unfortunately we'll have to go and fix these edges uh, we may be able to do this slightly differently maybe if we did a continuous loop Yeah, that, that kind of helps. Um, I would still prefer if these were joined. So we just need to do that a few times. So what this cap is going to do is simply provide a little bit more detail just to make this part slightly more believable. Trying to navigate all the other geometry we've created. All right, so we have this sort of cap object on the battery now. And it's replicated on the other one as well, which means we can probably go to the main battery cube and sort of use a ring selection to select these edges around it. Once we do that, again, we apply the same language we've been using everywhere else where we do one bevel and then a second bevel to sort of show that maybe an aesthetic quality of one of the designers is showing through in the machines he's creating. Now we will want to create some cables for the top of these batteries, some nice heavy duty cables just to provide maybe a weak point or to show some vulnerability or some technical complexity. Oftentimes it shows a little bit of technical complexity and mystery when you show these cables running everywhere, similar to this detail right here. But I think that's enough for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, on a side note, I know that I've been doing these videos less frequently lately. And uh, I'm just spending a little bit more time with my family. And I had a couple of computer issues. But... Rest assured, I plan on continuing to make these videos. So until next time, see ya.